When the universe was young, the gas between stars and galaxies was opaque, so bright sunlight couldn't get through. But a billion years after the Big Bang, the gas was completely clear all the way through. Why? NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has recently found out what happened. The stars inside the galaxies gave off enough light to heat and ionize the gas around them, which cleared our view of the universe over hundreds of millions of years before the Big Bang. The results were made by a group of scientists at ETH Zurich in Switzerland, led by Simon Lilly. They are the most recent ones about a time period called the Era of Reionization, when the universe went through major changes. After the Big Bang that started our universe, the gas all over it was very hot and tightly packed. Over hundreds of millions of years, the temperature of the gas dropped. The universe then hit repeat. Most likely, the birth of early stars and galaxies caused the gas to become ionized and hot again. Over millions of years, the gas became clear. Researchers have been looking for a very long time for proof that could explain these changes. At the end of this reionization phase, the new knowledge pulls back the curtain and shows what's going on. Not only does Webb clearly show that these clear regions are found around galaxies, but we've also measured how big they are, said Daichi Kashino, who is the lead author of the team's first study and works at Nagoya University in Japan. Kashino was the main author of the first study because he had the most experience with the research. Using Webb's data, we can see that galaxies are ionizing the gas all around them. To get an idea of how much bigger these areas of clear gas are than galaxies, picture a hot air balloon with a pea hanging inside of it. Webb's data shows that these relatively small galaxies were responsible for resizing and cleaning up a lot of the space around them. Over the next 100 million years, these bubbles of transparency kept growing and finally joined together, making the whole universe transparent. It took 100 million years for this to happen. The group Lilly was in decided to do their study on the time right before the end of the era of reionization. During this time, the universe was neither completely clear nor completely dark. Instead, it was made up of patches of gas in different states. Scientists pointed Webb in the direction of a quasar, which is a very bright, active, supermassive black hole that acts like a huge flashlight. This made it possible for them to focus on the gas between the quasar and our cameras. As the light from the quasar moved through different patches of gas on its way to us, it was either absorbed by opaque gas or moved easily through clear gas. The team's groundbreaking discoveries would not have been possible without combining Webb's data with observations of the center quasar made by the WM Keck Observatory in Hawaii, the very large telescope at the European Southern Observatory in Chile, and the Magellan Telescope at the Las Campanas Observatory in Chile. By shining light on gas in our line of sight, the quasar tells us a lot about the gas's composition and state, said Anna Christina Eilers of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She was the lead author of another paper by the team. Next, the scientists used Webb to find galaxies that were close to this line of sight. They showed that galaxies are usually surrounded by clear areas with a diameter of about 2 million light years. In other words, Webb was able to look at galaxies near the end of the era of reionization as they were taking back the space around them. To put this in perspective, the area that these galaxies have cleaned up is about the same size as the gap between our galaxy, the Milky Way, and the Andromeda Galaxy, which is our closest neighbor. Scientists didn't know for sure what caused reionization before the Webb telescope, so they didn't have this clear proof until now. Before that, they didn't know for sure what was wrong. How do these galaxies look when you look at them directly? They're more chaotic than those in the nearby universe, said Jorit Mathy, also of ETH Zurich, and the lead author of the team's second piece. Both works were written by Mathy as the main author. Webb shows that they were making stars, so they must have made a lot of supernovae. They had a very interesting and busy childhood. Eilers used Webb's data to figure out that the black hole in the quasar at the center of this field is the biggest black hole in the early universe that we know of. This black hole is 10 billion times heavier than the sun. This makes it the most huge black hole in the early universe that we know of. She said, we still don't know how quasars could have grown so big so early in the history of the universe. This means we don't know how quasars could have grown so big. Here's another puzzle we have to solve. Also, the beautiful pictures Webb took didn't show any signs that the light coming from the quasar had been distorted by gravity. 
This makes sure the estimates of the masses are correct. Soon, the group will start studying galaxies in five other fields, with each one focusing on a quasar in the middle. Researchers couldn't wait to talk about Webb's results from the first field, which were so clear that there was no doubt about them. We thought we'd be able to find a few dozen galaxies from the era of reionization, but we were able to find 117 with ease, Cassino said. This completely blew all of our expectations out of the water. Webb has done a lot better than we thought he would. The emission line galaxies and intergalactic gas in the epoch of reionization Iger research team, led by Lilly, has shown the unique power of combining traditional images from Webb's near-cam, near-infrared camera, with data from the same instrument's wide-field slitless spectroscopy mode, which gives a spectrum of every object in the images. With this change, Webb becomes what a team calls a… More about the James Webb Telescope found. High-resolution near-infrared light from NASA's James Webb Telescope has shown the antics of two young stars that are still growing. Arabic Haro 4647 is the name for these stars. Follow the bright pink and red scattering spikes until you reach the center of the area to find them. Inside the orange and white spot, you can find the stars. They're surrounded by a thick layer of gas and dust, which is feeding their growth as they continue to get bigger. You can't see the disk, but you can see its shadow in the two dark cone-shaped areas around the core stars. The parts of this design that stand out the most are the fiery orange lobes with two faces that fan out from the stars that are still growing in the middle. A lot of this stuff came from these stars. Over thousands of years, they've constantly eaten and thrown out the gas and dust that surrounds them. When material from more recent ejections hits material from an earlier time, it changes the shape of these lobes. This is like turning on and off a big fountain quickly and randomly, which makes waves in the pool below. Some planes take off faster than others, and some let out more stuff when they do. Why? It probably has something to do with how much stuff was dropping on the stars at a certain time. The most recent things that stars have thrown out can be seen as blue threads. They go just below the red horizontal diffraction spike at 2 o'clock. These ejections, which are on the right side, make wavy designs that are easier to see. At some points, they don't join, and they end in an orange area with a very strange, uneven light purple circle. On the left, near the center stars, there are also lighter, curly blue lines that sometimes get hidden by the bright red diffraction spike. All of these jets are important for how stars form. Ejections control how much mass a star ends up with. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.